First thing we're gonna do as we would start any good photography day, take our camera. This is our camera, this is our machine, this is the way, this is the eyes through which we see the world. We're gonna take this switch, we're gonna turn it on. Good morning. What we're doing today is product photography and we're gonna photographize as a pin. Box Brown, he draws, I've seen him do it. I have several of his books. We're gonna take one of his pins and we're gonna shoot it to outer space with the way we make it look out of this world. To the dark room? Let's go down to the dark room. Box Brown decided to draw Andre the Giant, big, strong. We're gonna photographize that pin. I can't get it off. I wish I was able to get it off. There's the back, the front, two different parts. Let's go down to the dark room. Pick up your camera. You're gonna need that. This box is a box, come on. This box is a box that I got to dress our pro to dress our products. You want little cool things up in your uh, company. Um, I know the words, but you don't. You're gonna need all kinds of props to dress your up your pin and make it better and shoot it to outer space. So here I have some dress plans. I got them, I bought them from a lady who was weirded out that I bought them. And here is, that was just some packaging that something else came in. Here's the pin. We're gonna shoot it to outer space. We're gonna set this little guy up right here and then we're gonna aim our light source at him. If we paint with light. We're gonna shoot through these dress plans we're gonna shoot through the dress plan we're gonna take these sunglasses that would normally but we're gonna put them behind our pin but this is interesting because here we have Andre the giant as a pin but in real life he was actually much larger than a pin he was a giant did you see the documentary they did on ESPN about Andre the giant it's pretty good you should watch it here we have Andre the giant keeper size or something that and here we have the dress plan. This is kind of our backdrop because we don't want to get any of this horse shit in the back. We're going to bump the ISO down. This guy doesn't need to be that bright. He already shines like a diamond because he's a star. And we're going to bump down the F-stop. Come down to the dark room. Come to Bob's. We got you. And there's a shot, for example. We're going to go a little closer now. Another great shot of the pen. Andre the Giant in real life would almost never have been able to fit into this box. And we take the shot. I don't know about you, but there's one. What's Andre the Giant doing in these dress plans? And we obviously got it. Thank you again for joining us. Before we leave, obviously we want to turn the camera off. But you knew that. I'm sure you wouldn't waste a battery. Thank you for joining us. My name is what I said it was before. I can't wait until you see us again. See me again. What's Gucci, Rip Van Winkle? Wake up, it's Tuesday. That one's not going to stick, if we're being honest. Worst catchphrase I've ever heard in my life. Rip Van Winkle. What is going on in my mind? The first fictional character I could think of is Rip Van Winkle. What did he even do? <laughs> I can't wait until my mind deteriorates to the point where people, my grandchildren are going to be asking me, like, Siri, who was the president in 1994? Well, that was Constable Rip Van Winkle. And he's the one who decided that everyone should have crayons with every meal. Idiot. Ooh, this is the Ridge Wallet. Ridge gave me this, and they're a sponsor of today's shows, as they have been for the past two episodes, as they will be for the next one or two episodes. Forget what the actual deal is. Let me tell you about this wallet. You want compact design? Ooh, we're talking about a compact design. You want to talk about old school WWE colors? Ooh, I believe the color is burnt. Normally it's not good when things are that, but this is fine. It's slim as hell. It's metal. It's cool. Holds your money in the back like that. It's like you let a race car hold your money. Where's it? Come back with that. Five dollars. Test two. Test. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to Mike in the Morning and a cup of coffee to you. It's very full. On Reddit, there is an uptick in people sharing childhood stories that have haunted them through their entire life for spooky Halloween times. I'll share an embarrassing story from my childhood that has always haunted me and made anyone who was there laugh every time I brought it up from now until forever I'm at. My nickname in high school was struggles now i don't remember the first time it was said or exactly who made it up it's uh between a couple different people luckily a bunch of people called me that but i do remember the first time a coach said it and this story is about that So I played all these sports and I would be the guy show up to practice early, leave practice late, try hard, super duper try hard, never 
really made it in most of the games in most of the sports on account of not being very good, maybe rain, mostly the first one. Baseball was one of my favorite sports because I was very, very good at that when I was young. Made so many all-star teams, played junior Olympics for a little while, and then I got to high school and other things started to matter more, like girls and listening to No Doubt. Was one. So when I tried to pitch in high school baseball, I didn't have the exact same results I did when I was a younger man. Like, for example, I came into one game against Notre Dame in Fairfield, Connecticut, and a kid hit a ball over a town. He hit the ball over the bus parked in the parking lot off of me, and that was the heater. I gave him the, the, everything I got. So they didn't let me pitch for a long time after that. After practices and practices, I'm like, I'm good. This is good now. That's probably not going to happen again. Also, it doesn't matter because it's high school baseball. And what could you possibly be trying to win for? None of us are going to be pros. Most of us will be an accountant. One of us will be a comedian. Bad pitcher was the comedian. Spoiler alert. So the coach was like, all right, man, we'll let you, we'll let you pitch again. Uh, we'll let you pitch in Thursday's game. Don't f it up. And that's, I think those were the curse words. That day, I forgot my socks. They were blue socks. And those are so important when you're trying to play baseball. It's a dirty game. It's played on dirt, actually. We're already on the bus. There's no turning back. But I do have sweatpants. I do have blue sweatpants that I wore on my arms to make my arms look like I did curls. I took the blue sweatpants and I put them around my ankles and I tried desperately to cover them with my pants. Obviously, it didn't look like socks at all. Plus... One of my teammates ratted me out, and I was like, Coach, I could still I could still pitch, though. There were only socks. And he was like, I can't believe that you put your wristbands where your ankles are to fool me and everyone and the whole world into thinking that you weren't a fuck up. So we got to the game, and the dude's like, all right, we're going to let you pitch. Go grab a ball and go warm up out in right field. So as I bent down to go grab a ball in the dugout, my head hit a what I can only describe as a rusty trash can and a little trickle of probably tetanus laced blood went down my face as I looked up and saw my coach. And then my coach said verbatim, struggles, what happened? <laughs> Didn't get to pitch. Question number one comes from Cardinal JD. Colonel JD. I'm 23 and I just moved out of my own for the first time. I'm slowly realizing that I don't own anything important like a nightstand or a bath mat or chairs. What are some maybe not so obvious things I should buy to make my life easier or my home more comfortable? First of all, if you don't have a means of making coffee, you are f up. Just get someplace where you can sit down and chill the f out for a little while. Make sure you don't have an annoying sized trash can. If your trash can is too small or too narrow, it's going to fill up right away and you're always going to be taking trips. Who has time? Get yourself a, a person, an adult sized trash can. Get yourself the family economy size. You ever see a box of kicks? You know how they make giant boxes of kicks for the entire family so the mom and dad could feed eight kids? The family value box and they go around the table like that. Get one of those, put a sack in it, but throw your trash in there. And then you just throw away the whole box. No, but get a trash can. Don't get a Keurig. Don't be one of the people who fools yourself into thinking that a Keurig is a good coffee machine because it's not. Watch HGTV for a full day. Sit on somebody else's couch, watch somebody else's TV, and then just mimic what you remember. I had three of these, but there's only two in here for some reason. Matthew Hedges says, knowing whether your intentions are pure or if they're selfish, like giving to the homeless. Am I giving because I love the homeless man or because I think people or a divine presence will see it as good? Thanks, Mikey boy. First of all, very interesting, very deep question for a show hosted by a 34 year old comedian called Mike in the Morning. Also, it doesn't matter. Check this out. If I'm a homeless guy, and I know it's tough to picture, and I don't have any money or any food or any place to stay for the night, and I know that if I get $7, I could, I could stay at a place or I can go get some soup or some shit, and you come over and you give me $7 and you got all this 
bullshit running around in your head. Like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Am I doing this for other people? Am I doing this to make myself feel better? First of all, make no mistake about it. There is a part of you that feels better when you do good stuff for other people. So it's a little bit of a selfish thing, but it's not a bad selfish thing because, and this is really my only point, at the end of the day, I got some soup. You think the homeless guy eating soup for the first time in a week is going to be like, pfft, he probably just did it for somebody. Else. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a shit about what's going on in your head. He has soup now. So it doesn't matter. Thank you for the soup. Only two of them are coming through. Balls. What was the other one? God damn. All right. I can't find it. It's two questions today. I'm sorry. I owe you another question next week. Next week, it'll be four questions. Thank you to our sponsor, Reej Wallet. I'm going to keep keeping track of my money in the fastest possible way. I started a photography uh, Instagram account. If you're interested in that, it's Mike Photography. I have a bunch of shows coming up. While I'm waiting for this to load, you'll probably see a bunch of names pop up on the screen. Those people support the channel by clicking the join button underneath or going to my channel URL slash join. $5 a month, you get five extra things, some music to use in your videos, free of charge. Still loading. All right, San Diego, November 1st, which is a Thursday. I'm at the La Jolla Comedy Store. You've heard of La Jolla. There are a bunch of seals and it's always nice there for some reason. How is it always nice? Uh, November 5th, I'm at the Soda Parlor in Nashville, Tennessee. That show is sold out. November 14th, I have two shows at Flappers, Attack of the Comedians at probably 7 and Hump Day late night later that night. November 17th is the next Friends and Friends show. I'll tell you guys when tickets are available for that. December 18th, I'm at the Setup in San Francis, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope you have a good week. Protect each other and take care of each other. All right, bye.